Here come the Bowers! Y'all ready to go swimming, baby? Come on! Give it up! Get out of that water! I tried telling y'all, it's swim lessons, baby. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Swim Lessons. I'm your host, Dallas Hansen. Hey, make sure you listen to every Swim Lessons podcast available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And make sure on YouTube you subscribe and like every video you can. It helps out uh, everything we do here. It uh, sometimes gets to be a lot of work, but hey, we're making it through and we appreciate you joining here today. My guest is Lucas Mormon. Lucas is the director of ECI Basketball in the state of North Dakota. He won Mr. Basketball in the state of North Dakota in 2002, along with Gatorade Player of the Year. And he is also a North Dakota State Bison legend by competing in the 2009 NCAA National Tournament against the Kansas Jayhawks, which all of us sports fans here in the great state of North Dakota remember. Uh, We talk stories about the game of basketball. His great friend and former teammate Ben Woodside, who is a legend, and uh, just what the game means to him, and I really enjoyed talking with uh, with Lucas. He seems to know the game very well. He's been doing a lot of camps in the summer and, and along with ECI basketball. So basketball is literally his life. But before we get to Lucas, we got to talk about Game Day Media, baby. Game Day Media, more than a game. Your leader in live video sports coverage in Northwest North Dakota. At Game Day Media, our goal is to expose, support, and promote the best athletes that North Dakota has to offer. Subscribe to our channel at Game Day Media ND on YouTube or find us on Facebook at Game Day Media for schedules, quick links, and games, stats, everything you need if you are a student athlete's mom, dad, aunt, uncle, friend, cousin, whatever it is, you can find them. It's all the student athletes playing on Game Day Media. I'm going to be joining them in the booth for some play-by-play. I'm really excited. So make sure you check out Game Day Media. And hey, football season is right around the corner. And along with Game Day Media, we've got another great network here in the state of North Dakota that I love, and they are a big sponsor of ours, and that's PSP Network, promoting local student athletes and making sure their names are known and not forgotten. They are right now in the heart of baseball and softball season, but like I said, their football schedule is coming out shortly. So make sure you check out their schedule of events on their website. That's PSP.network or at YouTube at PSP Network. Nick Holberg and his team do an amazing job, and I really appreciate Nick. And I cannot wait to see what their fall schedule has. I know I'm going to tune in for a few games. And I've got some merch out. It's at www.dallashanson.com. But somebody that helped me get that is BSN Sports. Since 1972, BSN Sports has helped area sports teams look their best as they strive for their goals and dreams. They provide apparel, uniforms, and equipment for teams in nearly every sport. Hmm, Can you believe that? Local service with a national reach, that is BSN Sports. Contact your local BSN Sports representative for more information. BSN Sports is a proud sponsor of Swim Lessons, the podcast. And I'm a food guy. And if you're ever in Northwest North Dakota, whether you're traveling here for a game of basketball, football, whatever it is, meeting relatives, had a family reunion, do me a favor. When you're in Williston, go to River's Edge Bar and Grill. They're known for offering the best happy hour in town. Can't beat that. Providing unbeatable deals. Can't beat that. They have a lively atmosphere. You really can't beat that. And guests can also enjoy a variety of entertaining activities, including bingo, trivia, and the very popular Name That Tune. Come on down to River's Edge for great drinks, great food, and great fun. Thank you, River's Edge. And last but not least, the great and powerful Glasso Angus. Glasso Angus is a proud sponsor of Swim Lessons, the podcast. Glasso Angus is your premier source for registered Black Angus cattle since 1973. Glasso Angus cattle showcase dominance, durability, and docility, and are built to thrive on the northern plains. Check them out at glossoangus.com. That's G-L-A-S-O-E, angus.com. That is all our sponsors. Appreciate them. They make the show possible. But uh, here we go with the great basketball mind that is Lucas Mormon. Dude, thanks for doing this, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. It's been fun to watch you develop, if you will. So I was doing a little research, and we have a mutual friend, Dean Wincheski. Tell us about the first time you met Dean. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, being a Dickinson kid, I was a soft, I was a freshman, I believe when he first came in freshman or sophomore. Okay. And so freshman played freshman ball. Um, and then as a sophomore, that's when I, I got moved up and got to be a part of his team. And, uh, he had a lot of rebuilding to do. You know, we were, we were a struggling program. I want to say we just won a couple games that first year and then went to like nine and nine. And then, um, you know, my senior year, got the opportunity to play in the state championship game and, and won Dickinson's first state title. So what was that like? That's gotta, that's awesome. That's gotta be a good feeling first ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. I mean, um, to have a team full of a uh, bunch of big guys, you know, I want to say we were six ten was me six, eight, six, 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 four, six, two, a, a six, six big off the bench. I mean, we were yeah. probably the biggest midget team there ever was. So <laughs> <laughs> what did, and then you got Mr. Basketball your senior year, right? Yep. Yep. So was there like a big curve from your junior year going into your senior year, like summer ball, you just started things, started clicking or what was that like? Yeah. And you know, I actually think I said that wrong. We won it as my junior year and okay. lost a bunch of those guys, sorry, going into our senior year. And so my senior year, we didn't even make it to the state tournament. Um, came up short in, in the, uh, the play in game against century. They beat oh, okay. us to go to state. So, uh, it was my junior year that we won, lost a lot of those guys. And it was just kind of another rebuilding year, but, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, just for me, just, um, the developing, you know, and becoming more of a leader, having a bunch of older guys on that junior team and, uh, you know, just having, having that role of, you know, trying to, you know, pick up guys, you know, get them better in practice. Um, you know, it was just a, it was a great opportunity for me to, to help, you know, kind of going into college. Yeah, totally. Okay. So you win state, um, you said you just missed the playoffs in your senior year. Yep. What was that feeling like? And what did coach Winchesky say? You know, I mean, it, it was, you're losing losing those guys it, it was it was going to be tough regardless um but you know we, we battled we still had a good year um but just a lot of guys who hadn't had any varsity minutes you know yeah. and so for him then that was another rebuilding year because they won it again in 2007 so it was almost kind of that same rebuilding process over the next couple of years for them to win it again i think with tate kick was a okay a, a big time player that that yeah. year so and then you started getting offers your junior year, I'm guessing. When yeah. does North Dakota State come into play? Yeah, so hop on an AAU team, know nothing about that. Um, now that I'm coaching AAU and running a program, way different, right? We, yeah. we we went down for a week of practice in Rapid City. I played with the South Dakota team. Um, had one North Dakota player on my team, Alex Belquist from New Rockford, uh, who went to play uh, football at NDSU and was my, was my roommate there. But, um, you know, just way different. It was, a, it was about a two and a half week span of out to Los Angeles, Portland, and Vegas. And then no your kidding. season was done. And that was during the summer so nothing wow. in the spring and um but being out there you know i would say didn't help me a lot because ndsu had seen me during my um you know high school and i committed already you know halfway through my senior year so um I, I would say you know they came out and they watched those games in those areas but not a lot of um you know not a lot of other schools besides north dakota mm -hmm. um aberdeen was the one i, I looked into um you know, just more local stuff. Uh, so, so who was coaching at NDSU at this time? So I had uh, Tim Miles. Tim Miles. Yep, Tim for two years. Really. And then he leaves to Colorado State. Yeah. In comes Saul Phillips, who you know was our our entire first year we redshirted. So Saul Phillips was our kind of our coach on the scout team the whole year, and mm -hmm. now he comes up and he's the head coach uh, for my remaining years there. And Dave Richmond, who's now there, was an assistant at the, that oh, whole time too. Coach was Coach yep. Richmond. Yep. What was Coach Richmond like as an assistant? I loved him. I mean, he was honestly one of my favorite coaches. He worked with us bigs, um, you know, got to know him very well. And he's the kind of guy who is going to be hard on you. He's going to pick you up and he's very honest about things. And, and I respected that. I feel my, my dad was kind of that same exact mentality. And so for me, that wasn't really anything new. Was there a big jump from high school to NDSU? Because you see a lot of kids now like um, Grant Nelson, for, yeah. for instance, like the jump from Devil's Lake to NDSU. Now he's going to Alabama, obviously. Yeah. Great Final Four run. What was the jump like for you from high school to at North Dakota State? Yeah, well, I wasn't ready. I was not really? ready. Nope. Just um, week or what would week, you? Week, yeah. I graduated uh, 6'10", 200 pounds. I mean, I'm 260 now, you know, yeah. and, and not by any means in shape. Here, but, um, <laughs> uh, you know, just that the physicality the quickness the speed of the game i mean i was yeah. definitely behind in all those categories i was told i was going to redshirt you know um, ben woodside he was given the option but with that four-year transition to division one we had that probation and weren't allowed to play any postseason so by redshirting our senior year was the year we were finally eligible to do that and that's kind of what we worked our whole career for so what's it like playing <clears throat> and you know you got probation so you're not able to go to the playoffs and you're just kind of you know you're not going to make it farther than the regular season what's that mentality like tough you know i mean i remember i remember tim miles um crying in the locker room one game probably wouldn't like if he if he heard that but um <laughs> no he, you know just 
we would get close in all our games. We were so young and we'd lose at the end and just couldn't pull it off. And it was just like, you know, we keep, we're right there, but just can't, you know, mm-hmm. just can't get there. And we work so hard. Um, but then, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, a little bit sad. You get to the end of the season, there's no opportunity for anything else. It's just done. But looking back at it, it's kind of like we just kept the story of, okay, we're waiting for our senior year. You know, I, definitely different than it is now, right? You know, I don't yeah. think many kids are, are doing something like that if if they can't have an opportunity to play in a postseason. Take us to the moment where you meet Ben Woodside. Yeah, I was like, this guy's 5'10". <laughs> he's, he's kind of our guy, what? You yeah. know, but uh, I mean, um, I was just telling someone this the other day, you know, I watched The Last Dance when it came out, you know, the story of Michael Jordan and the Bulls and stuff. Oh, that and was, was the best. Yeah, and I was like, that is Ben. Like that's the mentality really? he has. I mean, he has got that killer mentality. You're either with him or you're you're against him. You know, like I'm bringing you on and and we're going. You know, and so do you have an example uh, of that really quick? Just like he, he's not going to let us lose. I mean, you know, in the locker room, he's he's coming in at halftime and he's he's getting us together. He's he's angry. He's but in a positive way. You know, it's it's um, criticism, but but uh, you know, we took it as the right way. But you know, if you knew his personality, you understand it. And he's just like, you know, I'm going to get us there and and hop on, fellas. We're we're going to get this. You know, and so um, you know, I've, I'd never played or met a guy like that, and uh, you know, just a, a great opportunity because. He uh, he actually got cut from his AAU team his his sophomore year. Really? Yep. Made it his junior year for Minnesota Select, and then uh, didn't have many offers. You know, and he's to this day the still all time leading scorer in NDSU history. I mm-hmm. mean, just just a an, an animal on the floor. So now let's get to the fun stuff. Your junior year, um, you go on the guys go on this magical run. Woodside, you got you know everybody. Yep. Um, take us to the was it the Summit League Championship? Yep. Take us to that moment when you know, hey, we've got a chance to go to the big dance. Yep. What's the coaching like before the game? What's the locker room like? What's Woodside saying? What are you yeah. thinking? Take us in there. Yeah. So that was our senior year. That was the, that oh, was the, sorry. Yeah, okay. that was the last year. Um and kind of kind of a Cinderella story, right? I mean, we we go the whole year, great year. Um, and we get to the conference tournament and things kind of get switched before we thought some seeds were going to be different. It was almost like they were kind of, it almost seemed like the summit league was against us a little bit with how they were setting things up because I think they had thought if we lose, there's a chance Oakland also gets in two mm-hmm. teams from the summit league get oh. in that, that could be huge for the summit league, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, I remember coach being, bringing us all in and kind of mad about that and telling us like, Hey, we got to win this because there's no guarantee, you know, they're saying maybe this, but I don't, I don't know if we get in. Right. And so, um, two battle, two battles in the first two games, Centenary and, um, Man, I can't remember the second game we had. And then in the championship, we played Oakland. And down about uh, 10, 12, the whole game, uh, come back. Woody hit some big shots. Michael Tweet hit some big shots. Um, and it comes down to the final play where I set a high ball screen for Woodside. He comes off and kind of a runner at the elbow makes it. They inbound it, shoot it from half court, and just just rims out, you know, and everybody storms the floor. And yeah. just, I mean, that was super emotional just because of the fact that this is what we had, you know, blood, sweat, and tears for, you know, that's my fifth year this is what it's all about and we make it and and yeah the rest is kind of history so oh, man so did you know like that shot uh, every north dakota knows about that top of the key what were you like reading reacting during that play or was that a set play or you what know, was that going through that was like our offense <clears throat> for years like I, I i was there to set ball screens for him high ball screens all the time and he's coming off playing off it hitting our shooters attacking the rim mm-hmm. you know for me offensively it was more him attacking the rim kicking it out uh top of the key shots stuff like that or or, or getting rebounds and things like that but um we we uh you know, I remember when we played Stephen F. Austin uh, in a conference tournament, or a little, sorry, just a little tournament, a holiday tournament. He had 60 points, oh. 30 for 35 from the free throw line, and we literally set a high ball screen every p- time down the floor and just kind of let him go to work, you know? Yeah. So, so did Oakland not hedge that at all, or what was the, I'm well, trying to remember. But. Yep, so with it being a vertical screen, he has the option to come off mm-hmm. either way. You know, I wasn't setting it on the side. Okay, so with that, you. it's just hard to, hard for that big, Mm-hmm. to know which side he's coming off of. And his first step was, that's what made him really good, being an undersized guy. He was able to get by. There's something to like those smaller one guard, two guards, like Hunter Berg. Do you, yep. you, yeah. He had such a, I remember watching him when he was younger, he just had such a quick first step. And then once he was by you, it was over. Yep. You know, and, and Woodside's the same. And there's just got to be something to that. Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're that tall, that's kind of got to be your game, right? Especially yeah. at the Division One level. Yeah. Um, because if, if you can't, you know, then... 
then it's hard to get by guys. It's hard to get shots over guys. And um, that's why I'm saying that mentality that he had was, I'm going to go at you and I don't care if you're seven foot, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to finish around you or to the side of you. It didn't, it didn't really matter. So you win the Summit League Championship. What's the bus ride like back to Fargo? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, there was actually a big storm then. Oh. Uh, we got caught like another day there or something. Um, you know, a lot of fans weren't able to make it down uh, due to that. But uh yeah, just a, I mean, great night celebrating at the hotel. Um, yeah, I mean, just pretty tired on the way back. But yeah. uh, now we're excited to hear, you know, where are we going, who are we playing, selection show Sundays coming up. Um, you know, and if I'm, if I, I think their, their their tournament is kind of one towards the end. Mm -hmm. I think the Summit League, you know, there's not a whole lot of weeks left to, before that day. So, yeah. So okay, so you get selection Sunday. You got to play Kansas, the Jayhawks. Mm -hmm. Tough draw. Yep. Um, who was on Kansas's team that was pretty good? Was that Aldridge and Aldridge, the, the yeah. Morris brothers? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get that selected. Yep. What's the vibe in the room once you know we got to play the Jayhawks? Uh, honestly, it was to, to us that wasn't the big deal. We got, we were in Minneapolis, so that's like a home game. Oh, you know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that was like I mean, that was the best thing because now we know we're going to draw a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. And Kansas, I think, travels well for for game you know tournament stuff, but they were definitely outmanned in, in the yeah. in the fan category when we got there. I want to say there were 17,000 fans, about 13, 14,000 Bison fans, three, 4,000 Kansas fans. So for us to run out and see a bunch of green and gold, I mean, that, that got us going and it was a great, great, uh, couldn't have been better as far as uh, an opportunity for a, a first game like that. How were the nerves before the game? You know, Saul was great. I mean, Saul's kind of a, a goofball. He's, I, I want to say that for our, uh, for our, pre-game video stuff of the guys he brought up like funny cats on youtube it just googled funny cats and it was like <laughs> yeah. cats jumping into mirrors and stuff and so it was like that's what he pulled up and he's like we're just gonna play loose today guys you guys know their roster we know who we play and we know our game plan stay loose have fun out there you know this is quite the opportunity so that was a true like true basketball game game of runs highs lows highs lows take us through the mentality of the kansas game and what you guys were thinking as a team yeah we hung around and you know four to six to eight back down to four two you know it was it was like that the whole yeah. game and and really started to kind of give us you know the idea that we can win this game um you know their guard sharon collins was kind of their main guy he had i think 37 on us it was just we couldn't stop him and they couldn't stop woodside he had 36 whatever yeah. it was um but i remember i followed out with uh four five six minutes left aldridge tried to take a charge and called a block and followed out and saw that part kind of hurt because i'm ending my career you know on the bench watching but um still very very cool experience so afterwards, did Woodside say anything to the team or, or what was what was said? You know, I, I don't I think we all went around and just got to say, you know, just yeah, appreciate you got, you know, this has been quite the journey. And, you know, the, these are the guys that ended up in our weddings. These are the guys that, uh, you know, we, we make a trip to hang out every summer in golf. And, you know, I mean, That's so awesome. so it was just that bond of coming in as freshmen, all redshirting together, going against the varsity guys for an entire year really benefited us because then we all started freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, every every single one of us, every game. Um, so just, I mean, I knew what guys were going to do before they did it. They knew the same thing. I mean, we just became that tight. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just, I, and that's the thing about nowadays. It's like, you don't get that anymore. You don't get yeah. a group of guys that comes in for four years and sticks it out together. You know, I mean, you, oh, you look at, uh, it was Oakland this year, wasn't it? Didn't they come yeah. in and had that little run or whatever? Yeah. You know, I think those are some guys that had stuck it out for a few years together. So how do we get back to that? Or do you think we ever will? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, it's there, there's definitely gonna have to be some changes. If so, you know, I think with the money side of it, and and any kid's gonna want to take more money to go play somewhere, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Grant played uh, AAU for me, and I got to coach him for a year. How do you pass up? You know, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, you know, whatever amount of money that is, it's a lot more than NDSU. That's tough. You yeah. Know? What's Grant like? Great kid. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's special. He's he's so nice. Um, he came with us on most of the trips and, and a very quiet kid. It, it took him about halfway He's through the quiet. year. To, oh, very quiet. Yeah. I mean, it took him a while to, to open up. Um, now I get the opportunity to coach his brother, Joel. He's playing for me this year. So pretty good. Been, yeah. Yep. Joel's good. Yeah. And I mean, you look at, you look at all of his family, his brother's uh, like top 10 in the nation out at USC for javelin. I mean, oh, wow. like discus. I mean, these, these guys are just physical specimens. And so, and jeans. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think Joel's got a chance to be very good. He's just, he just hasn't grown into his body yet and stuff. And so, um, but yeah, great family, great kid. Uh, it's been really fun to watch him 
progress and to see what he's become because he has that same mentality Woodside does. I mean, I'm going to go in and I'm going to dunk. I don't care if someone steps in front of me. And that's just hard to coach and that's hard to get out of kids. Mm -hmm. You know, he grew up playing over at uh, Lake Region, going and playing against college kids all the way through high school. And I think that really benefited him. What did you think like when he had that great NDSU first year and then he goes and does the NBA thing? Didn't go as planned, yep. and then he goes to Alabama. What were you thinking? Were you talking to him? Like, what was going on? Yeah, I mean, I always kept in touch with him, uh, text here and there and stuff. And, uh, you know, through that process, I, it was very interesting for me because I had a lot of, you know, agencies and stuff reach out. And it's weird because I just coached him one year in AAU. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all. So these guys researched deep. Really? Um, had a call from the Spurs and the Thunder, and it was almost like a scripted 20 questions, almost the exact same from – you know, tell me about his family. Tell me about a time you got after him. How did he react? You know, what was he like off the floor? And not much about basketball, you know, so it's, they really dig into personalities on kids and are they getting a good person? I think mostly it was very interesting to go through that process for me, you know, knowing him for one year like that. Wow. I, that's, that's insane. They dug yeah. that deep. Yep. Um, so now when he goes on that final four run, has a great breakout game. You're like, that's the kid I remember. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think to go into a place like that, and, oh. and be a kid from North Dakota. That can't be easy, right? right. You're playing you're playing with, uh, you know, just a different style of basketball and and then at NDSU for sure, you know. And, uh, but, you know, credit to him for going in and, and just doing what he did. And I'm so excited to watch him this year and, and to get a game at UND. Oh, man, so that's awesome. So I was just with, with, you know, his brother Joel this week. I said, there's one thing I expect out of this and I need a ticket to that game. So <laughs> it's gonna be I'm packed. counting on him. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Betty will be packed. So yep. let's shift gears a little bit. Um, you're heavy into ECI. Um, one thing that's kind of a, and don't take offense to this, but one of the, the big things right now is kids should play multi-sports. Yep. We're kind of seeing right now kids just playing like basketball all summer long. What are your thoughts on that? And do you combat that at all? Or what do you think? We're hundred percent on board with that. You yeah. know, play, play other sports. You know, I had, uh, you know, one of, one of my best players, um, Parker Brodina, Devil's Lake kid. He's playing a baseball game on Friday. He's coming down, missing a Friday night game and he's playing with us Saturday and Sunday and maybe giving up a baseball game to do both, you know, gave up yeah. a baseball game to go down to Chicago this past weekend. So we've missed him here and there. We, but I always encourage that. You know, I was a three sport athlete. I was I uh, ran hurdles. Uh, I played wide receiver through my senior year, and I just know how much that helped me. If a kid wants to be a one sport athlete and put all their time to that, I'm not I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But I just think there's a lot of life lessons and you know a lot of character things that come out of playing other sports and yeah. ways to compete as an individual. You know, or on a football field, toughness. You know, so um, you know I know there's there's football coaches that love when they see you know, big linemen out playing basketball, mm -hmm. working on their footwork and stuff, you know? So, um, I think, I think coaches look into that a little bit of homie, you know, what am I getting of a three sport athlete means something still these days. And we always encourage that. And we'll always work with that because I was a high school coach. And if we don't, we'll start losing kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, that if they have to pick between us and something else. So one kid on my team this year is a big track kid to probably be a, a track athlete in college and, uh, uh, Grayson Schaefer from Minot High. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, missed, you know, three out of our eight tournaments, I believe. And so, you know, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. it's, if we're missing seven out of eight different story, we probably got to find a different yeah. kid, but I'll live with that. Yep. How much has the ECI landscape changed since you first got into it? Yeah, I think it started in, uh, 2000, Four, the year I graduated high school, so I had knew never had never heard about it. Um, but uh, Dan Hodgson started it, uh, and then Joe Cattell comes in with Travis Kraft, mm -hmm. and uh, they keep it running. And then Joe hands it over to me when he goes to marry, um, because he can no longer coach yep. due to NCAA rules and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I mean it's definitely evolved. You know, we I remember when Joe would run his tournament in Mayville, and we'd have like twelve teams show up to our tournament. You know, we have like sixty teams show up in Fargo now uh, for our ECI tournament that wow. we run. Um, you know, we had six eight teams back then um you know there was a period where they had south dakota teams minnesota teams early on a bunch but then it kind of dwindled down as other programs started up in minnesota south dakota um there just wasn't it was kind of an untapped market i think early on but now we got i think 18 19 teams this year boys teams and so um yeah it was it's uh I, I enjoy every minute of it because it's more than just the basketball it's it's helping kids it's getting to know kids and staying in touch with them and um you know you're going to talk to malik here in a little bit uh, also just a great kid and for me to call him up or him to call me actually early on and just um in the uh, spring and say hey coming back to moorhead you know what can i do to give back and help out i mean that's what it's all about yeah right yeah and for joel to or uh, grant to send a text back you know the final he doesn't have to do that stuff right right you know they remember where they came from um and that i get to be 
you know, a page in that story is, is what it's all about for me. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, good answer. <laughs> Can we, we were talking a little bit before we hopped on about kind of your new beginning right now, you quit teaching. Yep. You Can we talk about the app that's going to launch that Woodside and you guys yeah. are? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk, touch on that? Let's do a quick plug for that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's called Raw Raw. It's been around since uh, kind of right around COVID times of how can we go digital with the coupon books? Mm-hmm. You know, can't go door to door anymore. Right. You know, so um, some districts have actually put a kibosh to that of just no longer allowing that. And there's more than just that. It's it's what happens to someone when you send them out. Could something bad happen to it? You know, so um, they did a pilot program and now have been investing hard into this. Um, and that's what the Woodside's role kind of has been in, in starting up our team, North Dakota, of a new app um, with the developers of Tarmac who... Uh, did the caribou coffee app so mm-hmm. kind of will look like that uh, they also did the early sports engine before it was bought out by nbc and so uh, very very high quality app and uh you know just excited to get in with work with youth programs um we got a couple middle schools signed up with us who haven't done a bunch of fundraising before but see the value in this mm-hmm. um to help kids make it easy on kids and not have to go back year after year after you're asking the same people as long as these people renew their memberships that these kids kind of sell. And so we've been hard after local businesses and communities to uh, offer up some sort of discount to be on the app. And so we give them free access onto the app. They don't have to pay anything a business. We just want some sort of decent uh, um, discount so that people see value in it. And then people redeem throughout a year. Yeah, They see, you know, for a $50 product, they saved 500 bucks. They're like, I want this back again. Yeah. Well, now that ties back to the kid and doesn't have to raise that money again because they'll still go back to that organization. So, you know, a freshman could do it for four years and not have to keep calling those people as long as they renew. So we're big into having a good app that has high quality businesses that people see value and want it back the next year. Sold. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> the game of basketball must mean a lot to you. You just talked about your college career, high school career. You're still in ECI. You, you're just in Taiwan, North Dakota doing a camp. Um, what, what does the game of basketball mean to you? Yeah, it's kind of been my life. And uh, I have three kids now. Um, and, and it's time to maybe start cutting back a little bit. You know, yeah. it's, it's gets to be a lot. Um, especially now at my age, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, and I don't know what this new job is going to entail of, of, of time and commitment, all that stuff, you know, so it's time to get really going on that. Um, we got one AU tournament here down the cities this, this upcoming weekend, and then it'll be some, some time to get back to, to doing what I'm my, my new job, you know, and, um, really hammering down on that. But yeah, it's been, you know, from a, from a little, and I, I didn't start to like fifth grade, you know, we got kids now that are playing, yeah, you know, early. four or five year olds, yeah. you know, like, yeah. so, um, yeah, from from playing in the driveway with my dad to to what it's taken to me now, you know, it's it's again, it's more than just the basketball. It's the experience and the friendships and the connections I've made through it that that have really meant a lot to me. So. Well, listen, man, I really enjoyed this. Um, Swim lessons is a podcast about overcoming tough times. You've been athletic through a lot of tough times. Share something with us. Leave us with something when your back was against the wall, the chips weren't falling as as you'd like them to, and and something you said to yourself to get over those tough times. Yeah, I'd say my my sophomore year, I tore my ACL. Kind of came off a couple games against like a Valley City and a Mayville where I kind of broke out as an offensive player. And that was something I, I'd i always see stuff in the the blogs and stuff. Why do we got this guy? He only scores four points, five rebounds. You know, we, well, North Dakota preps coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah it was just kind of like, yeah. why am I reading? You know, my parents are like, don't even read that stuff. You yeah. know, but when you got the number one, two, and seven all-time leading scorers at the time, you know, it's like, well, we had plenty of scores. But mm-hmm. um, tore my ACL and just was really down like, how do I come back from this? You know, and uh, again, to have teammates like that that are picking you up every day. Woodside actually ended up getting injuring his wrist and did a bunch of his rehab. He still played in practice, but he did a bunch of his rehab with me during that time. Um, so got that bond with him more than you know maybe some of my other teammates just because of that time we spent in pool workouts in the in the weight room, different things like that. Um, and and they didn't ever leave me behind with that, right? And so to have unbelievable staff helping me through it at, uh, you know, as far as trainers and stuff at NDSU daily working through that stuff, I think really helped me as far as like uh, hard work, dedication to anything in life, your job, um, your friendships, your marriage, all that stuff. Like you're going to have hard times. You got to work through it and, you know, not give up. And so could have gave up, could have said, this is too tough. I don't want to have to do this rehab, you know, but I I wasn't going to let other people down, my teammates, myself, more importantly, and my family. And so I'd say that's that's probably one of the biggest ones. Just don't yeah. give up. Don't give up. Yeah, just keep grinding. Um, you know, I think uh, North Dakota has, uh, you know, Western Minnesota, well, Minnesota, South Dakota, you know, has a lot of great families, yeah. uh, tough kids, yep. you know, homegrown type stuff. And uh, I think that speaks volume. You know, that's not something you find everywhere across the nation. So 
Well, hey, I appreciate your time. Yeah. Uh, this was a lot of fun for me to relive some of those. So I was younger when it happened, but I mean, you and Woodside, everybody watching the buy, that was kind of their coming out party. You know, they were, yep. that was a good time. So I appreciate you. Good luck in the future and, yeah. and wish you the best. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, appreciate man. It. That's a wrap.